but I guess I'm old school. But whatever, man, I'll, I'll adapt to the way things are now because I'm not going to, you know, stand on principle and say, fuck it, I'm putting out a 12 song album. If you don't like it, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> You're stupid. So, so we're, with, oh, sorry, John. Hey, with the, uh, with the new album or the EP, however, whichever way you go, are you, is there uh, like tour possibilities? Or are you be like going out to do tour stuff to promote it or? That's actually come. That's going to come. I have no set plans now, but that's part of the reason that I'm looking to uh, join this company is that they, they have a lot of, they, they put on shows all over the country and it's, so there, it's definitely going to happen. I just don't know where and how yet, but you know, it'll be all over my social media w- when it does happen. So absolutely. I have a, I have a show here in Asbury park. That's kind of like an album kickoff in, in June. And, you know, after that, I hope to get, you know, other parts of the country where rock and roll is generally my brand of rock and roll is more accepted than it is here where I live. And it's, it's almost like, a, it's, it's, it's like a, a, almost like a non-existent entity, hard rock here in the Jersey, New York area. Now, you know, you got to get South, you got to get West. So that's where I, I I'm looking to go. Okay, cool. That's, that's cool because it, it, we were talking to some, some folks it, it, to, to try to tour or do a, a bunch of things on, a full album. I, I, I like how you can break this up to make it last a year, you know, because people will be like six months from now and go, man, Kenny's got some new shit out. Yeah. On, it, let's go see him again. Yeah. And that's, and I, I totally get the way things are now. And it's a better way to do things. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, little, little doses because that's all, that's all people seem to be able to want to handle now. And that, whatever, man, that's, that's, that's the, uh, the, kind of people that our phones and social media have turned us into for better yeah. or worse but it is what it is and, and that's yeah. fine i'll just Got a zig and zag yeah adapt to the to the new way of doing things and, yeah. I, and i'm cool with it you know it's kind of and it, it kind of keeps me busier as an artist you know to keep you know put out put out an ep put out a one-off song put out another ep mm-hmm. it, it keeps me busy instead of like you do an album and you're like okay now i gotta wait like you know, 12 months or a year. <laughs> right. To do so another next one. question, are you going to, are, are you going to have like full fledged CDs with liner notes and that type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Two? Okay, it, cool. Cool. Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I heard myself echoing. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what platform I was going to use CD baby, but you know, mm-hmm. uh, it might not be that, but what, when it comes out, it'll definitely be, everyone will know where they can find it. Good deal. Good deal. And, and it's just not going to be on digital. Oh, it will be. It'll be on digital too. Yeah, but we could hold oh, not it. just digital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to have a tangible, you have to have, be able to be, uh, open a tangible product, like pull the wrap off and like, oh, yeah. Man. Smell it. Read, yeah. Smell it. Read the inside. <laughs> I, I, I would never put out a product just, just digitally. Love it. Because it's, it. it's intangible. You know, you can't mm-hmm. hold it. Absolutely. Still I'm getting a little bit of echo on myself too. Uh, I do. Have, I have a question that I was sitting up last night listening to you, a lot of your stuff on like YouTube. Like I started with uh, Modern Day Jesus and kind of just let it go down the rabbit hole for me. Uh, my question though is, if you could sit in and perform with any band, either like open for, close for, or sit in with the band, who would it be? Who would you like to perform with? The, I, I can't. I can't pick just one because there's like, there's artists that I really dig. I mean, um, Blackberry Smoke, I'm a huge fan. Uh, mm-hmm. Cheryl Crow, I'm a huge fan of hers. Um, Jason Isbell, um, uh, Tedeschi Trucks. I mean, to be able to play on stage with and hear Susan Tedeschi's voice coming out of the monitors and play with Derek Trucks would be like a, a total mind fuck. <laughs> it would be. I'd be like, holy shit, I'm actually standing up here doing this. So th- those are the first four that really come to mind. Awesome. Right oh, and I, I, I'm a huge Steel Woods fan, too. I don't know if you guys know of them. No, I've, I've never heard of they, them. They're, they're a Southern band. I believe they're out, out, of, out, out of Alabama. Um, uh-huh. Southern rock. Um, they're just, you know, they're touring all the time. They're like, like a real working man's rock and roll band. You know? Cool. Yeah, check them out. Yeah, they're great, great songwriters. Got your notebook there, John? 
Yeah, I absolutely already wrote that down. (laughs) (laughs) We know John so well. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about your band Profit. Profit was, I mean, I joined that band in my senior year of high school. Uh And we went from playing like the shittiest little, you know, whatever dive clubs we could get into, frat houses at Rutgers, um, (laughs) parties, backyard parties. Mm -hmm. And then we just, the the ball kept rolling and we became like, you know, a C-level club band, then a B-level club band, then an A band, you know, right up there with you know, the Twisted Sisters, the White Tigers, the Rat Race Choirs, all the bands that were big in the Jersey, New York area, Uh doing covers of, uh, it was kind of like split down the middle. We do like heavy progressive rock, but we'd also do hard rock. So on one hand, we do um, Yes, Rush, Genesis, Mm -hmm. Pink Floyd, and then we do like Scorpions and ACDC and Van Halen. So like that combination of stuff was just perfect. Like people, it held people's attention. Mm-hmm. And we, we became one of the top drawing bands here in Jersey and uh, eventually, you know, started writing songs and got a record deal with an RCA subsidiary, went off to do our first record in, in 1985. And wow. at that point we were like, okay, we're not a cover band anymore. You know, right. Just come home and, you know, sit on your ass. You know, we didn't really have any, couldn't get on any tours. It, it was that band was was a was a blast. I thought we wrote some great shit, but we never sort of never got out of uh, cult status. Gotcha. For whatever reason, I think we were ten years too late. If we had come out in the era of Kansas and 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 Rush, you know, and stuff like that, it would mm-hmm. have been a whole different story. But we came out right smack in the middle of the the, the hair metal MTV era. Gotcha. And here we are this this you know kind of you know somewhat keyboard heavy band and people just weren't really buying it gotcha because we we weren't tall and skinny enough and (laughs) had big enough hair you know (laughs) so that that's really pretty impressive but kind of burns you in the whole the whole uh music industry for a while though didn't it yeah it did like and, and after that band it kind of you know saw its you know life expectancy went out went on to do a few other things um uh, not nothing that i don't think anybody would have really heard of uh went on to you know start writing and recording and singing my own stuff and but then by like the early 90s i was just like you know what? i'm really tired of this shit yeah I'm really just beating my head against the wall and then by then we had entered into the nirvana and right, era, right. and i'm playing like bluesy guitar driven hard rock and really at that point nobody gave a shit anymore yeah so i was like you know what if that's the case i don't really give a shit and i started getting passionate about other things and just sort of left the whole writing and recording side of music behind for like 20 plus years wow wow and then you you were re-inspired by a blackberry smoke album right yes i discovered that album when i was coming out of i was coming out of a really hard time uh, and just kind of like hold up working from my home computer, just kind of getting healthy slowly, mm-hmm. but surely. And I stumbled on the, I would listen, I would look for albums to listen to on YouTube every morning, you know, just load them up and right. listen throughout the day. And I saw Blackberry smoke the whippoorwill. I was like, what's this? And I clicked on it and I listened to it. I was like, wow, it's actually pretty good. This is pretty good stuff. I'd never heard of these guys. Went back the next day, did it again. And it sounded even better. Next day, it was even better. And then after a while, I was like, these guys are fucking awesome. What, what is this band? Who, what is this album? <laughs> and, that, and that, and that uh, about a year down the road, ignited my desire to create and write songs again. It was it directly attributed to that record. Awesome. Is why awesome. we're sitting here talking today, which is nuts. That's too cool. That, and now that I'm, is I'm awesome. friendly with Charlie, the lead, you know, Charlie Starr, the lead singer. Right. He, he plays on one of the tunes on, on my new record. I saw that. How did you guys get together? I mean, did you fanboy with, with him? I, I, I kind of fanboyed. And like <laughs> a, 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 a friend of mine knows him. Um, and we were talking one day. He was like, man, I'm going to turn Charlie onto your shit. I'm going to tell Charlie, Charlie to follow you on Instagram, follow your guitar uh-huh. playing. Because at the time I was posting a shitload of, you know, I would do like, I would cover 
you know, whatever solo, a Brian May solo or a, a Matthias Jab solo, uh, Allman Brothers stuff, Skinner yeah. stuff. And he just, he got turned on. He started following me and I'd see he'd like my shit. I'd be like, oh my God, fucking Charlie Star from Blackberry Smoke is, <laughs> is watching me play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, you know, you get a dialogue going and event, you know, we, we got friendly. He's a super nice guy. And I was like, you know what? I'm fucking, I'm just going to ask. And mm-hmm. one day I was just like, hey, you want to, uh, what do you think about singing a verse on a uh, tune home, a new album? And he was like, he said something like, uh, you're a much better singer than me. You don't need that. He goes, well, I'll do a guitar <laughs> solo. And I was like, well, that's cool. I just nice. don't, you know, I didn't think he wanted his voice associated with any other band other than Blackberry Smoke, which I totally understand. True. true, true. He's so identifiable. You know, mm-hmm. people would hear it and go, what the fuck? You know, they wouldn't. Yeah. But he did a guitar solo and it's fucking ferocious. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like we trade off like on old dog. He does. He does one. I do two. He does three. And then I do four. I love that shit. <laughs> it's, it's a blast. And I still, to this day, I'll, I'll, I'll think of it and I'll be like, Holy fuck. I really like Charlie really did a fucking guitar solo on my record. <laughs> <laughs> like who am I, you know, just some dude that like the band did it. And like that, but that's, what a, that's how nice of a guy he is he's a genuinely super nice guy very down to earth very humble and super then there's cool. zach and scotty who i've known for years who did solos on the record too but those guys are like old buds of mine from right we were just like kicking around the dirtbag jersey club scene <laughs> so for them it was just like hey you're doing a solo on my record they're like yeah all yeah. right okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel reckless abandon and conflicted differ have you grown i definitely i definitely think i have reckless abandon to me was like was this surge of new creativity you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it was like ideas were coming from all over the map you know what i mean and i'm turning them into songs yeah you know and when i go back and listen to that record now i i i like it dumb i have no no you know i'm not critical of it or anything but it really sounds like a like a like um a freshman effort to me you gotcha. know what i mean like my singing is like rough around the edges and like you know there's stuff that's you know that's a little loose and a little floaty but mm-hmm. you know at the time it was exactly what i needed to do absolutely because it was it was busting out of the gate but if i compared it to um conflicted conflicted to me is is much more it's much more polished I feel like I, I've I progressed like from A to B uh, as a writer, as a singer and all that kind of shit. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, next record will be another progression from there. Right. Right. That I just kind of I don't reminds think it. I just take it as it goes. <laughs> kind of reminds me of another New Jersey band, uh, Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. Uh, they 7800 degrees Fahrenheit was one of my favorites. I, and I don't know why, but. It was just one of my favorite Bon Jovi albums, and they won't play anything off of that because they absolutely hated it. Really? Absolutely hated 7800. And I'm like, why? I love this stuff. Yeah, it's a slow and rock record. Hell yeah. I don't know. I'm never going to be like, I'm never going to look back on earlier stuff that I did and be like, ah, you know, because it was, that was me at the time, you know, it's Mm -hmm. it's a snapshot of where I was. And, right. You know, and, and I think a little bit of theirs was trying to follow up uh, Runaway and She Don't Know Me and that mm-hmm. type of thing. And the record company says you got got one year, got one year. And then they just started rushing and they, they just weren't happy with with the music. And uh, I can see that. But still, I think some of the, some good shit came out of the 7800. I mean, I, that, that I listened to that one all the time so maybe i'm just partial to it but and didn't understand the background of oh we just got to get this pushed out we got to push it out push it out just write something john just freaking put in some lyrics who cares just throw some shit together yeah well i mean at the end of the day it's really it's whether the fans like it or not it's not Mm -hmm. you know the artist what the artist thinks of it is not of consequence to the fans because it's all about the fans yeah you know they're the ones supporting the band there if they like it then then more power to it. Right. So you had a, a pretty musical uh, upbringing. You always had music around. Um, yeah. When did you decide and 
do you remember the moment that you said, you know what, I, I, I think I want to do music for maybe as, as a hobby or a, uh, a living. Do you, you know, remember? It's funny because it, it didn't really, it didn't, I didn't think of it uh, ever in like this long uh, reaching into the future kind of vibe. Like it started out, um, it, it's all, you know, credit all goes to my mom because, you know, she, mm -hmm blasted great music around the house and <laughs> most notably Santana and Hendrix. Oh, hell yeah. And hearing that way on electric guitar as a little kid was just like, holy shit, you know, it, st it struck a chord. So I, I, I wanted to play. So I started playing and um, I had like an old school, you know, old wedding Italian New York guy, you know, giving me lessons and I wanted to play rock and he's got me learning out of Mel Bay books, which is the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you learn your basics first. Right. But after a couple of years of that, I was like, man, it's just, it's just not where I wanted to, you know, play rip and lead guitar solos. And I didn't know how to get there. So <laughs> I wanted to quit. My mom wouldn't let me. And eventually I stumbled onto figuring out um, the electric stuff on my own. Um, and Kiss Alive, the first Kiss Alive album had a lot to do with that. Are you kidding? No, not at all. No, was, no, no. I literally <laughs> learned. The shot to me is what that, that, was, that was. We have got this Easter egg on every show. Kiss has to be mentioned. And it's usually John. Or he tries to get somebody to mention it. <laughs> and then here comes Kenny just throwing it out there. All right, well, let, let me tell <laughs> you how I like easy. Let me tell you how important that record was. I got that record. And it, it, like, there was like, like little whispers of this band Kiss is coming out with this album, you know? Yeah. And then uh, I remember uh, WNEW here in New York, 102.7, I heard they played She, which is a really dark, heavy tune. And I heard it on the radio. I was like, this has got to be that Kiss band. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, it was. Mm -hmm. So I ran out and got that double live record. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing like Ace Freely is playing these amazing memorable guitar solos and he's doing all the uh jimmy page style guitar licks uh -huh. but he's doing them slowly and easy to understand for a kid you know so it picking apart those guitar solos is what literally taught me how to play electric lead guitar kiss alive one so that it's all directly related to that awesome and and once that fire got lit i was like holy shit that's that jimmy page lick man but it's slower now and all of a sudden all the like all of the areas of the neck all connected and i'm like yeah. holy fuck it's just like it's just a formula their little box this connects to this box and this connects to this box and and that was like and that all happened within a period of a couple of months so once that unlocked i was like now i get it and now it feels great and i can do it and it was like now this is all i want to do it wasn't like, I'm going to be a musician and I'm going to be a guitar player and a rock star. It was just like, mm -hmm. I'm going to play guitar, period. Gotcha. And, and that was it. Got in a little, <laughs> like a four-piece, you know, cover band, did like eight Kiss songs and two Aerosmith songs. That was like <laughs> our whole, that was our whole playlist. And Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, of course, of course. Got to have Stairway to Heaven in there. <laughs> so yeah, and then, and then like once the high school bands and stuff got started getting rolling and like, you know, I saw, you know, what was involved with the gear and transportation and set lists and like having your shit together and, you know, dressing some reasonably cool way when you go on stage. Then it like, oh, the wheel started to spin. I was like, this is something like I'd, I'd like to do like all the time. Cool. And, you know, and eventually like my senior year in high school, I was, I was in profit and, and that, that band turned into a working five night a week band. And that, that mm -hmm. was off to the races, I guess, at that point awesome yeah it was it was a blast that's awesome i have one of those all important questions for you kenny yeah uh, where would someone go find any of your music or merchandise that they want to purchase okay um easiest way to find the stuff that's out now uh is on my website kennydubman.com you don't even have to buy it the first two records reckless abandon and american songbook or are, are on the website you just click on the album title on the button, then it'll bring you to a page that has all the MP3s and you could either listen or download. Awesome. Free music. Yeah. Now when, now when uh, conflicted comes out, it'll be on all the, all the platforms and I'll be blasting 
all social media with it. There, there won't be any difficulty in finding it. And then, of course, you'll be able to find it through my website. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, so the website's always the best place. I mean, it, you know, it's a good place to get warmed up for the release of Conflicted is to go there and listen to Reckless Abandon and American Songbook. Awesome. Awesome. Well, can't wait for Conflicted to come out. Um, is, is the date going to change a little bit or is the first EP going to be out um, May I'm, 17th? Is that still a, a target? Uh, I'm still targeting it right now, but I, I like I just started like it talks with the with this management company. And if uh -huh. they want to, you know, push it back and do something with the first two um lyric videos that we already released mm -hmm. like kind of like redo them I'm gonna, I'm gonna let them just go at it the way they want to go at it they have a lot of experience okay so okay, uh, cool. as of now i'm still looking at the 17th uh and if things change uh it'll be it'll be blasted nationwide right I'm gonna hire so, planes to tow banners across the beaches <laughs> so still the best best option is kennydubman.com you'll have you'll have the any changes in the dates and where and when you can get it exactly like that the, the website always tells you where to find music whether it's something that's getting ready to come out or you know just something that's already out and for anybody that wants to um you know check out the current single modern day jesus it's right on the the home page of my website awesome well thank you so much kenny it's always a pleasure talking to you man you're you're such a funny cool guy man <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> i love it guys thank uh, you thank you so much for having me i hope to see you again soon you. oh i'm I sure you really loved it thank you kenny all right fellas have a great night you too thanks kenny take care mm. bye all right everybody that was kenny dubman uh we will be joined by none Ooh, other than right the there. appalachian apostle <laughs> Mr. Adam Jode of Scattered Hamlet right now. That was so perfect timing. That, Mr. that was perfect timing. If anything I have, it's timing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a drummer? <laughs> no. <laughs> In fact, I'm never allowed to count because I invented my own counting system for like music and like apparently no other drummer uses it on the planet. So they're like, that's eight, bro. I'm like, no, it's four because this is the way I count it. They're like, well, that's not right. I'm like, well, it is right <laughs> if I'm making the rules. So this is like four. <laughs> I so love I was, it. I was rocking out to the fucking traveling Wilburys getting ready for this fucking. Dude, your background is way better than ours. Oh, no. You what don't, what, what the real? Fuck? I've got what brother, the fuck? I got brother Jake, brother Don Bag Slayer. I have our new stage banner. I have a beer keg. I have a boar's head. Yeah, this is the shit, man. This Holy is the shit. Get, I'm going to need to get a beer keg to put in my background. No, yeah, it's, it's not. I think we just need to get a picture of his and then just start using <laughs> it as ours. Yeah. I, wish, I wish you could see the whole room because if you go over to here, I have a shrine to kiss with like me backstage. Motherfuckers. And it's got all my kiss like. Was that playing, John? John, uh, that was planned, wasn't it? And then this side of the room is our old thing. It's all our Marshall stacks. Like, this is like our studio. And behind nice. that shit is uh, where we do our whole record label. Where we do, like, all the mail orders and stuff. So this is oh, our, cool. Our, cool. our, like, HQ, you know, of sorts. So this is kind of like our zone. But I do a lot of, like, on this setup, I do a lot of our uh, demos and, you know, some of our recordings and shit if we mess it up at the studio. I can do all that here. But this I have. I Okay, I'm going to show you guys awesome. <laughs> I have two Dukes of Hazard toys with the Smokey and the Bandit original uh, model. I have, nice. I have the full <laughs> California Raisins band collection in front of me, along with WWE action figures and championship belts, but you can't see those in front of me. But absolutely no jabronis on that. No, but I do have a Fall Guy thermos. It is. Yeah, yeah, right? Like that. That's awesome. Yeah, there's some, this is just like, this. this room is just like a collection of like, like pop culture shit that I would have had in my room when I was a kid if I could have afforded it. <laughs> Just shit that makes you happy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> back here, the most important thing, I have a full tang replica of Duncan McLeod's sword from the Highlander television series. <laughs> so if we have to take somebody's head, we got it. <laughs> nice. That's the only one. Hey, Adam, before we get too far, we want to play a little bit of uh, your song, uh, Stereo Overthrow. Mm hmm and I, I believe it's going to come up right now. All right. 
I know that one. We stole that from Dolomite, by the way. <laughs> I totally it, was, it was absolutely beautiful because I listened to it like three times last night and had to like start and stop to find. I was like, this is the part that needs to play. Yeah, I was really excited. <laughs> I, I was I was on this kick and I was watching just like we, we I read that song after uh, we had some uh, epic disagreements with record labels. And uh, and I was watching Dolomite. Uh, both the real version and the Eddie Murphy biopic of it. And, uh, and I was like, Rudy knows what's going on. You know, like the, I felt like, you know, uh, a hillbilly version of that in a different era, you know, obviously I wasn't in South central and making black exploitation movies, but you know, I could, I could appreciate his, uh, his frustration trying to like sell this thing to people when he knew it would work and, you know, people didn't think it would work and, and, uh, you know, but yeah, so that was, that was what, so I wanted to take, I wanted to give a nod to that, even though nobody in the world, like, recognized that that was from Dolomite, but. Uh, <laughs> so I've got a question. Did John mention anything previously about Kiss? No, no, no. Kiss is just the answer to most questions. So I just, I just had to throw it in there. Because <laughs> it, it, it's hilarious because every week we have like a little Easter egg to where John either has to mention Kiss in some way, shape, or form, or get somebody else to mention it. And we just got off uh, off the phone with another guy that was in a band that brought up Kiss, and John's like, "Yeah." And right, then John, you get you dive into yeah, fucking Kiss. Yeah, no, I Kiss. just yeah, I'll bring up <laughs> Kiss and and uh, one one of my Les Pauls I use on stage only has super distortion as model. It doesn't have three pickups, but it's totally modeled after the Ace Freely one. And that's uh -huh. where, most of our stage tricks are just dumbed down Walmart hillbilly version of Kiss shit that I watched in seventies videos. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can I modify this? You want you want to hear my Paul Stanley story? This is my favorite story. Hell yeah, let's Absolutely. do it. Let, let's go Kiss deep. All right, so. Our, one of our one of the former members of of SH became Gene Simmons' bass tech, and uh, we we had a night off on the road, and um and he called us up and he's like, "You guys want to come backstage at Kiss?" Yes, is the answer, <laughs> and we'll, we will be there. So we drove to the middle of not in our tour routing to go to Kiss, obviously, which anybody would want to do, and uh, so we're backstage at Kiss, and they're they're letting us play with everything, you know, like their their texts and stuff, and. And of course I get over to like Paul Stanley and, um, and, 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 you know, the, all the guitar setups and I have a thousand questions for text text. When they see me coming, they should be prepared for like a Wikipedia session of, <laughs> of like questions. And like, I'm going on and on. I'm, and I'm, I'm playing th this tour. Paul Stanley was using the purple cracked mirror. I've been asked. And, you know, I, and that was for that tour. And I was, I was holding it. I'm asking him questions about it. You know, I'm holding fucking Paul Stanley's guitar. Wow. And a, about that time, Paul Stanley walks out. Now I'm wearing a cowboy hat. You see what I look like, you know, <laughs> like Paul Stanley walks out and he's Paul Stanley, you know, and he just walks out and he just looks at me and he just sees me holding his guitar and he does like job like this. And he turned around and he walked back into his dressing room and just shut the door. Now, <laughs> so, uh, he didn't tell me to put down his guitar and Paul Stanley looked at me and I was just like, oh my God, Paul Stanley looked at me and he didn't tell me to put down his guitar. So that was awesome. Holy shit. And that's my Paul Stanley story. And, and the, you know, and, and that was it. And then like some of their techs knew who we were. So they're like, can we get some pictures? I was like, yeah, after I'm done playing with the shocker guitar, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of scares me because um, I remember seeing Kiss in Wichita and the sound guy uh, fucked up Gene's bass and it didn't have it on. And Paul was like, hey, could you turn on Gene's fucking guitar? And uh, about a week later, we went to the music store. That fucking sound guy was there. They left him in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> so that's kind of scary. It's like yeah, he there's not much room. What, for what, a... what was discussed when Paul went into that room and shut the door? <laughs> you know, 
Well, <laughs> oh the, shit! Somebody funny, just got fired. Oh, yeah. It, it, well, the funny thing is, like, you know, we 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 have a certain attitude about us, and you know, like our buddy that was Tekken for Gene, you know, had to try out his aerial harness every day. I mean, and he he was a full blown Texan boy, you know, and uh, and Gene <laughs> would start yelling at him, and he's like, you know, those are strong words from a man who. Te- towards the man who tests your aerial harness every night. It was like, <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, but, That's um, awesome. But I did get to touch the uh, one of the axe bases and stuff. And, you know, of course I picked it up. It was like, I'm going to play Detroit Rock City on this. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have my moment. Like, I, I specifically, I have a guitar down here that the only thing it does, it's tuned down a half step and it's for when I'm having a bad day. I only play along to Kiss songs, Social Distortion, Slayer, anything that's a half step down and, and Thin Lizzy. They're all in this uh, this playlist and that's what it's like. Nope, this guitar is only, it doesn't appear on stage with SH at all. It just plays fucking Thin Lizzy, Kiss and, and Social Distortion and Slayer. <laughs> so it's fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna change things up here just for yeah. just for one question for you, and it's not gonna be music related. Mm. But I've been wanting to ask you this since we've talked about bringing this show back. Right on. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? Oh, that's a good one. Um, oh shit. Uh, well, I'm a freshwater fisherman, so let let's establish that. So there, mm-hmm. there's a limit to the size of fish. Right. I, I don't understand freshwater. There's giant sea beasts out there, and I'm not at the top of the food chain. I'm not interested in that. Um, probably, uh, a few right before COVID hit, I caught like a a 45 inch muskie that was, that got in like the papers and stuff around here. So that I caught that on the lure. So that was, that was my biggest muskie. And one time on tour, I didn't get to weigh it because I caught it on a freaking Mickey mouse. I was staying on a boat when we were on (laughs) tour. Right. And, and the guys like to go out and stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm just, I just hang out and listen to music. And, and we were staying on this boat and, uh, and there was a Mickey Mouse fishing pole and I dug up some night crawlers and I caught, it was in Illinois and I caught a giant blue catfish, the biggest catfish I've ever caught. I don't even know, like I had to go down in the water and like pull it out. Cause I was like, this Mickey Mouse pole is going to break. Like, this is not like, and I didn't know what I had. And, and I got that sucker in and it was, I was like, that, that, that sucker had to be close to, you know, pretty damn close to a 20 pound fish that was probably my biggest catfish but <laughs> the mickey mouse pole yeah i was on a mickey mouse pole that was the only thing on the boat and i was like i was done watching youtube videos and probably watching kiss videos and, and i was like i'm gonna go fishing you know that was, was good gonna, cast a few yeah and i cast a few and i caught a smaller one i'm like oh shit this is like working and then you know pretty soon boom i i got like a bigger one and it's, it's kind of like going to the casino once you start fucking winning oh yeah you just yeah, gotta keep fun. on pulling yeah, it's like I gotta, I gotta win this, you know, and, and, and I got it. And I had to take a picture because nobody would blame me, you know, when they come back hungover and stuff. Like, what did you do? And I was like, I caught you got, you got the pole next. Yeah, to I was like, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the answer to that question. But yeah, I'm really, uh, ain't, like, I can tell you when I catch a fish, I record everyone. On my phone, I can tell you what I caught it on the time of day and the water temperature. Like I'm, I got the shit down to a science. So my nephews will hit me up. They'll be like, "Isn't it just luck?" I'm like, "Son, <laughs> like, first if you're born after 1989, I, I take everything you say as skepticism." <laughs> I was like, second, this is this is skill competition." Yeah, so that's my shit. <laughs> I knew there would be a great story behind anything because I know that you are very avid in the in the fishing world. Yeah, it's it's one of the few things that I do. I don't do much uh, other than uh, I I don't have like a robust social life or anything like that. So like I, I'm very I'm either out in the woods or I'm not a very good I'm not a, I don't I don't really like to kill things. So I'm not like an awesome hunter, but I'm I'm really good at tracking things. So a lot of my friends when they hit like an animal or something, they'll. They'll call me at like weird times of night and be like, I need you to come track a deer I shot. And first, then I make fun of them for getting a bad shot on it, you know, and then <laughs> then I go out and, and I track a deer and for some, I crawl around with my damn light on my head. And, I, and you know, if you, if you shot it, I'll probably find it if it landed dead somewhere. So that, that's what I've gotten good at over the years. I don't know if that's still, maybe this, maybe in the zombie apocalypse or something, but you know, other than that, yeah, yeah. Track. If you get hit and you're bleeding, I can track you. <laughs> so what's your favorite song to play live that ever like that we wrote <laughs> that, that, that. both 
Okay. Right. There you go. Yeah. Two answers. Um, for for us in our set right now, we on the new album we covered a song uh, that Pete Berwick wrote called "See You in Hell," and it was it's one of my favorite things we ever recorded. So it's my favorite one to play live because it's a little out of character for us. You know, it's got uh -huh. some open guitar tones, got slide, gets not slide up pedal steel, and I, and I really like to play that one live. Can't play it in every situation, you know, like at festivals when we got like a short time span. I don't really right get to play it that much, um, but. You know, if I can just play like any song, oh shit, like the guys would never let me, but like I, I would do like a Joe Springsteen set. I'd play like every fucking Springsteen song. <laughs> Like, uh, we, did a, we did a high school we had a high school reunion a while back and the, the fellows that were the live band that was there you know asked to play an sh song and i was like okay i'll come up and play an sh song with you on one condition i was like i get to play one of i'm gonna give you five songs and you can pick two of them to play and if you let me play those two songs then i will like we'll play an sh song of your choice and that'll be all fine now, my question is to you guys, what do you think those songs might be? Because <laughs> I would see if you guys can guess the shit. Throw any out there. Um, no idea. You got any, John? Anything by Kiss or Twisted Sister. Okay, th those, are, those are good guesses. Yeah. But, but my actual answers were, it had to be uh, Brian Adams, Summer of 69. <laughs> Bon Jovi. Or was it anywhere close? Either the Blaze of Glory or One of Dead or Alive, or it had to be Rush Tom Sawyer Spirit of the Radio. So immediately they, they're like, no rush. Like, I, was like, I was like, and I don't give a shit if anybody wants to hear it. So anyway, we ended up playing Summer of 69, and I got to play One of Dead or Alive, and I was very excited about these things. Even though Blaze of Glory would have been my first choice. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that would have been the one. But uh, but yeah, so that those were like probably the two most fun things I've ever got to do besides our music because <laughs> uh, he's I had like, to throw the twisted sister because they have covered a twisted sister song so this is true yeah that yeah, that right. was uh the twisted sister makes sense uh it's funny because the the year we covered that we got a warp tour and if you want to see an audience that has no idea of any twisted sister songs like that that i'm it might as well have been fucking crickets when we busted out like stay hungry the kids are just <laughs> The kids in blood pants are like, like, what is that? I'm like, okay, that didn't really work live here. Under <laughs> you said Scattered Hamlet was on a warp, Warped tour? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. It, that, <laughs> the, it, it's funny because uh, the, the fellow, what, what's, I, I, his name's, I, oh, his name slips me. Who's the guy who made Warp Tour? Uh, Kevin oh, Lyman. God. Kevin Lyman. Uh, uh -huh. On the last Warp Tour, he, like, uh, he put us on several dates. And, you know, it's funny because I met him later we were in a hotel lobby and I came up to Kevin. I was like, Kevin. And he saw me and I was in my cowboy hat and he, and I didn't know if he would recognize me. Like, I want to thank you and putting us dates on the last warp tour. And he like stopped. He looked at me. He's like, Oh yeah, you guys with the cowboy hats. I thought it'd be hilarious to put you guys on warp tour to see what the reaction would be. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? yeah. You're <laughs> fucking worked out for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Like there was a lot of uh, there's a lot of kids and like they, there's a lot of flood pants metal there. That's what I call it. Like I don't know the problem. Yeah, we, like, we went to a warped uh, a warp like, show here in Oklahoma City, and there were so many buses. I have never seen so many buses in my life. I was like, holy shit! Uh, yeah, it, it was definitely. Uh, we were out of our element. But it was definitely really cool to see. Have you ever been to a warp, John? Are you ever going to go to warp, John? Okay. Well, there's sometimes. It, okay, it's, it's highly the, unlikely. Let me say it that way. <laughs> they have certain stages, like when they bring back like the the classic like punk guys to do stages. Like there's some really cool shit sometimes, and there's some yeah. really stuff that I don't ever want to listen to, and I'll just be. I, it's just not my thing, you know. And, uh, but there, there's some really cool stuff, you know, like if, if, you know, I'm a giant rancid fan, you know, like bands like that, you know, that, you know, when they, when they come back for, for like warp tour, I, I get really excited about that. You know, I, I just, I saw those guys in August, my wife and I went to rancid and dropkick Murphy show. And, and mm -hmm. all, that was really cool. And uh, I don't go watch a lot of shows for fun, unfortunately, if, you know, I don't have like people that I know playing at them and stuff, but that was one that I just wanted to go see. And it was, it was really cool. I was glad I did it. You know? Is there uh is there plans for you guys to hit the road anytime soon? Like big big time like long tour? 
probably not anything long right now. We're doing, uh, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, we're going out for like a week, you know, stuff like that. And we're, we're all, we all live in the same area now. So that's kind of changed, you know, how we can approach everything. It's given us a lot more flexibility, you know, in terms of like playing shows that, the landscape's weird for booking because, you know, in addition to, you know, there are a lot of venues closed because of COVID and uh, a lot of bands didn't make any money for two years. So now like everybody's like going after uh, a small amount of venues. So, you know, a national band of our size, you know, we're not, uh, we're not the first pick, you know, you know, we wouldn't be the first round draft pick for a venue. So, you know, we kind of have to just work with, you know, what, what we're being given and, and, you know, try to just make, make the best out of those situations and stuff. So that's where we are right now. Makes right sense. On. I know, I know it's definitely affected, like even some of the venues, like we've talked about this on, on previous shows with other guys that when we were talking about tours and like from a fan's standpoint, like we're all just like, no, you can play again, get out there and play. But like, we've heard, we've heard your guys' side and I'm like, that makes so much sense. Like, yeah, we, we suck as fans sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's, you know, and unfortunately the, the dreaded other side of it is like, you know, you got, you got to match our, you know, you got to give us our guarantees that we, you know, that we can make in that market yep. you know, and, and stuff like that. You know, we're not going to go back to, uh, you know, doing, you know, like a door deal in a weird market or something, whenever we already have, like, you know, when I already know, you know, how many people we draw and what we're worth in that market, you know, so we're not gonna, because the minute that you go back, then that's, then you establish your worth is here. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, if your worth's here and you're just like, okay, well, this time we'll go to here. Well, then the next time you hit them up, they'll be like, well, no, we got you for this last time. It's like, come on guys. You know, it's like, we, there, there's money for everybody to be made, but I know everybody's just kind of you know and i'm not slamming them from their perspective everybody's just scared you know they're, they're scared to take a risk and and uh you know and and that's what it is we just are kind of you know sort of you, you can't spend too much time worrying about uh what's there what was there before and what's there now you just kind of mm-hmm. got to work with you know the the way that the cards that you got dealt you know yeah and, and there's there's a lot to be said about planning a a tour six months out we you know you dedicate yourself to that and then a new strain of covid comes out crashes you i I mean and and you you've already threw thousands of dollars of your own money at this and now the shit ain't shit's not happening yeah i I mean it's 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 really cool like john said seeing your guys the side of it i get it yeah it's tough you know like and and you got to think when you go out for so you go out for a month, you know, like, it's like, okay, you know, we're all normal people. Like, so it's like, okay, you know, when you're out for a month, you're like, you got to make sure everything's taken care of at home. You got to make sure, mm-hmm. you know, everything's in order, you know, you're leaving your families and, and stuff like that. And you get all that established for that period of time. And then, you know, what, three weeks out, all of a sudden shit gets right. canceled and it's like, Oh, so then you book six months ahead of time. And it's like, and that could, it, it's, it's just crazy. You know, it's, it's very, uh, it's challenging, you know, it just, it is, it is, you know, and, and it's been a, it's been a challenging atmosphere for rock music in general for many years now. Mm-hmm. You know? So it, it's, you know, this certainly has complicated it, but you know, I'm not, I don't feel that my rap career is going to take off anytime in the near future. And I don't think I'm going bro country or anything. So I guess this is my <laughs> life. <laughs> so another way that I always like to make sure we try to help you guys is make sure we get the link out to where people can find your merch and your music. Yeah. With scatteredhamlet.com, you know, that we, if you just go there, it's got all our stores and stuff, Facebook, TikTok, TikTok, fucking TikTok. TikTok. I'm on that goddamn <laughs> platform, but uh, we're there under the Appalachian apostle, you know, our Instagram, Twitter, you know, anything that just says scattered Hamlet, you can find it. And, you know, we have our, our merch. Most things that you buy from us will be shipped out from behind that curtain over there. It's magic. Magical place. Where <laughs> magic some magical curtain. things happen. Yeah. And, and, and mostly things just get put in a mailing envelope and into a mailing box that then gets taken to the post office, you know, by someone that's helping us here, myself. And, and yeah, that's, that's, that's how we do it, you know, and just try to keep it, you know, the operation as lean as possible. You know, every, everybody you bring in is another, you know, mouth to feed. So we try to keep it, uh, you know, we've, we've mm-hmm. shrunk down the SH machine over the years. We used to have thousand hillbillies on stage and maybe not that many, but a lot. Now, it's, <laughs> now we have four. <laughs> now we have four. 
we definitely want to make sure that everybody knows please go buy the merch man sure. these guys these guys need you know that shit they need gas money yeah get it, them it, something get them something real it's crazy like uh from, i'm a big spotify user not slamming yeah. the platform or anything like that I, I like it a lot but you know you know, we make a lot more money off. If I sold like three vinyl down here, it would probably be about the same as, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand Spotify plays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. so, you know, like that, that's what you're talking about. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a complaint, just the, the reality of the situation is so, yeah. you know, physical copy of t-shirt and stuff like that goes a lot further than just, you know, like, a, you know, just streaming and stuff. And I, and, you know, I, I pay my fee. I stream, you know, I, I like it, you know, it's, yeah. it's a great service, but it's not a, it's not a very well-paying service. Right. Me. So so it's better to go discover on Spotify, discover the band, and go yep. buy the real shit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and if you, you know, that 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 helps out a lot. You know, any band, you know, it's, I don't care what size they are. You know, it's the, you know, the amount of money earns, the amount of money earned, you know. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it would certainly, it doesn't matter if you're us or, I don't know, fucking Kid Rock or something. You know, if you buy something, uh that's that's why you see a lot of bands doing like limited edition merch like clutch is real good at that and you know mm -hmm. people that, that put out like limited edition stuff because you know they it kind of you know get, gives you a way to connect with the band you know and that's what's that's what the cool thing about social media really is is that you can kind of connect with with bands and reach out and talk to them in ways that you know probably weren't possible when we were kids you know when i was you know hopping a train to go buy guns and roses cassette you know down at the fucking yeah the store you know like there was no way to reach guns and roses you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know now you can just like hit them up online and be like hey what's up bro <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's what i did with you the other day <laughs> i answer it if it, you know if it's not something jabronious i always answer and i, and I know you guys so you know but sometimes, sometimes <laughs> it gets out of control fuck man you know there's been so many times i've almost shut off the like dms and stuff because like you'd be surprised the stuff you get like people you know, wanting to write a song and I'll hum it out for you. Or, oh Lord! Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> that, you know, like or or you know, it, yeah, it, it's it's weird. You know, it, shit could go get weird like real fast. It's like it's. I was like, okay, normal, normal. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, and it's like, you know, like no, <laughs> no. So yeah, so you have to be like, so I give a lot of thumbs up. You know, like it's like cool, bro. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You want to be on Bleach Bangs? <laughs> it's how he answered me. I, I can <laughs> see it. I'm just kidding. Actually, his answer was phenomenal. I loved it. So yeah. No, there, there's some funny ones though where I'm just like, God damn it, you know. And I'll tell the other guys, I was like, Do you guys get shit like this? And they they don't get they don't get hammered like I do, but you know, like some. <laughs> By all means, don't hit up my family members. If you guys are listening, like, don't do that. It's just a dick move. Like, just don't, don't, don't message my family. That's, that's, come on. That's, that's just, like, Jesus, man. That's, yeah, you'd be surprised. You'd be like, hey, you know, yeah. but that's why I, I block my mom for that reason. Cause like people like fucking hit up my mom. Like, mom, stop talking to these people. <laughs> <laughs> just like one of your friends hit me up. I was like, I don't know that person. Like, dude, don't. <laughs> Yeah, he knew your full name, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's on the internet. I'm like, right. not, not, not magic. And she's like, "Well, I don't want that on the internet." I'm like, "Yeah, well, we don't really have a choice." That's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. But yeah, it's it's you gotta laugh. You know, I mean, it, you gotta laugh to keep from crying sometimes with that kind of shit. You know, like, and it's it gets worse. You know, I'm sure as you move up the tiers, like, you know, I have friends that are like in bigger bands and and i watch them navigate it because they're so much better at it than i am you know because they've been dealing with it longer you know and and uh and you know are just a lot more graceful than myself i'm you know like the, the rich rich or bass player will tell you like the longer that i'm out in the woods fishing when it comes time to like go interact with the general public i get a real bad disconnect like it's it's like i start to oh. i'm like yeah, I'm like a crazy mountain man out there. He's like, you, you've been out in the woods a bit, man. He's like, you know, I can tell you're not, you're not dealing with this well. Like, and he's real good at that kind of stuff, you know. And, and I was like, what? You need some socializing, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. That's what it is. He's like, you've been tracking deer blood and trying to catch muskies and chewing tobacco and chasing meth heads out of your fishing hole with your 357 for the last like four months. And, and, uh, 
This is not like the reality. You're going to play in Manhattan now. You know, like you can't, you can't bring your gun, Adam. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, bring him up 45. You tell me. <laughs> is there, uh, is there any other like amazing new scattered Hamlet news that you want to throw out there? Do you have anything? I wish, you know, it's, there's a, you know, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of lines in the water for stuff that, you know, we're trying to put together, but, you know, it's all, it's all talk till we sign it, you know, and, you know, so I really don't have anything outside of, you know, just, you know, we just released this stereo overthrow in the fall and, you know, we put out a couple of videos for it and, you know, but writing the, the new album and, and, and stuff with, you know, our, our new guitar player, Sean, and I've been, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. It's been a lot of fun working with him you know uh you know having different you know creative energies come in you know that, like that's cool you know like the bounce mm -hmm. stuff back and forth and and uh and it's it's been cool you know like we, we've we've gradually got to move more in the direction that that i was looking for and you know and and it's been fun it's been fun to see it grow it's also been a lot of kicks in the balls you know it's been a lot of uh you know a lot of heartache you know especially you know like we just had recovered from uh you know, Jake getting in his accident and stuff. And, uh, you know, we released the twisted sister cover and we were just like starting to get back to it. And it was just like, Oh yeah, by the way, there's going to be a global pandemic. Here's your kick in the yeah. balls, you know? And then it was, you know, so it was kind of like, you know, I feel you get some momentum and then it's like, you, you kind of get like kicked, which the, the twisted sister documentary is a great version of that. You know, anthrax is a similar story, you know, like there's lots of, I'm not saying we're bands like them, but you know, like there's bands that are, you know, far more accomplished than us, you know, who've been through some crazy shit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so it's, you know, it's not unique, but it doesn't make it easier. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a thousand percent every band in the world has gone through like their ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, I, I can't believe, you know, like a band like say, I, you know, I mentioned before, like a band like clutch that's maintained the same lineup since once they, when they started, that's, that's, in this day and age, that's so hard because, you know, just mm -hmm. life takes you in so many different directions, you know, like mm -hmm. we, we've got a lot of different lineups uh, of this band, you know, and, uh, you know, we're all, I, I, with, with very few exceptions, you know, we're all on pretty good terms, you know, it's just that life just takes you in different directions, you, yes. know? you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's not easy, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you, something calls you in a different direction you just can't do it you know and 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 uh you know but it's cool you know we've we've had a lot of people that you know i, I can't with very few exceptions you know everybody's played with us i've learned something from you know like there, there's been a few wankers that i didn't learn anything from <laughs> wanker, but uh but you know there was but you know for the most part you know like it's it's uh it's cool you know you meet a lot of people like you know like you fellas and you know there's there's good folks you meet and you know people that just like us just genuine fans you know like that's why we started we just mm -hmm. fucking like music you know it's not a you know not there's nothing magic i sit down here and you know nerd out you know that's that's what we do like people are like oh what's this crazy stuff that's going on backstage i'll be like i bet the people that are the most creative are sitting in a room like sitting like nerding out to like you know kiss or to you know we're shit when we were i was out with the, we were up with the band be at the means they opened they're phenomenal they're from alabama they opened for hell yeah a lot of times and uh and you know josh and i we would sit in the vehicle like before shows when we didn't have green rooms and stuff and he and i would we'd be listening to like fucking toto and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah like, and, like all this stuff would be like okay how would we adapt this if we could you know like and that's what we were doing you know just sitting around <laughs> talking about music or being like, man, John Sykes fucking rips on guitar, you know, <laughs> you know like those are, those are the kind of conversations, you know, we, we had, you know, I was, I was just talking, to, I have some buddies that are in a bigger punk band. I won't call them out, but I was, you know, I was texting with them today and they're getting ready to go in for pre-production. And, you know, we, we, we're, we're having a, a, a discussion about guitar tones and I'm getting tones for him on one of my guitars here. And like, I'm like, this is what Mike Ness from social D would do, but this is what Johnny thunders would do. <laughs> like, and that's, that's what we're like talking about, you know, because we're all it's big kids, you know, that were like music. Hell yeah. Hey Adam, I want to point, I want to point two things out before okay. the show, before we get done with our show tonight, for sure. Um, first of all, to you, Randy, right yes. over and where's, you see it right here. Yeah, that's Kiss, by the way, on my mirror. I see poison. 
that that's that was that was yeah. my that was my subtlety for tonight that I had set up. That's hilarious. But I was I really like, didn't, we, we've I got this weird it. angle on John tonight. What's going on with that? <laughs> and got, number two, uh, Randy's uh, son got married over the weekend, so oh, and he's our he's our background guy. He does all of our tech work for us, and he does absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to like throw the congrats out to him. Like, yeah, man, that, that's great. You, you need the youngsters to operate the interwebs and stuff. I know what the fuck is OBS. What yeah, the like, fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, our drummer Grant was born in the nineties, and I always make fun of. I always accuse him of being born, getting conceived in the back seat of an IROC C twenty eight at a wedding. <laughs> it's probably true. It, yeah, <laughs> it was like it's funny. Like the jokes went so long, you know. Like the, I'll introduce him like that on stage, and I'm like, one time his parents came to the show, and I was like, are they going to be cool? With that? <laughs> like it's like I don't want your dad like whooping my ass like after the show if I'm. Gonna... <laughs> it's like so this story has no truth, but but I see the poison thing. That was the first first concert I ever went to. I was a wee jode. A uh, wee jode. I was a wee jode, and I went to it was in New Jersey, and I saw poison. Britney Fox and Lita Ford on the open up and say ah tour. Uh, I thought it was going to be Winger because Winger <laughs> seemed to yeah. I was like, <laughs> I've fucking seen Winger four times this fucking year. How many different tours are they on? Listen, like, what the fuck? Kip Winger's teeth are so bright, like that <laughs> dude. Like that, that dude in his era, and he probably still is. That he is just a lady killer, man. You know, like that guy just smiled and was just like, oh yeah. Ding. He you heard it. He doesn't have to play bass. He just like, <laughs> puts a bass on him and's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> and Madeline knew, you know, it's like, but it's funny from that from that tour, I've, I've met, you know, many of those artists since then, you know, at festivals and stuff. And, and Lita Ford hates us, but, uh, but CC Deville, <laughs> I, and after I watched, the, I, I watched the, uh, the Mean Man, the, 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 the documentary on what, what, what's you know fuck I can't think of his name he was married to Lita Ford he was in Wasp why can't I think Chris Holmes yes uh -huh. Chris Holmes yeah. yeah after I watched that I was like oh I think we're like PS PTSD for Lita Ford like she like looks at us and she's like I know that fucking guy and <laughs> so that's why she probably doesn't like us but uh but uh, in a good story from that uh Poison Brittany Fox and Lita Ford was uh you know meeting up with with CC Deville and uh and it was just one night we were at, at, at a bar and like CC walks in and he looked like he walked off a Poison album cover in 88. It was amazing. And, and CC walked in, I'm like, CC. And he's like, Hey, and he just sat down next to me. I'm like, okay, that's, that's fucking cool. Right. So that's so awesome. He seemed really out of it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to surmise what <laughs> he was on. speculate. Let's, but he seemed really out of it. And I told him, you know, that you know i'm a, you know i was like yeah i'm a full-time musician and you know i told him i was like you know the first tour i saw and i told him and all of a sudden his spaciness just went and he proceeds to tell me with crystal clarity all about that tour like he was telling me like all these facts like and he knew exactly what i was talking about and i was just like whoa and like and he was an encyclopedia of like music knowledge and it was a really it was a really cool experience you know i probably got talked to him for like you know 20 20 minutes or so and you know we just sat there drinking a beer like and it, it was really cool and then he was just like okay <laughs> and he just I'm like done. Away. Yeah, he's like that's it you know <laughs> done see ya I was like, yeah, the, yeah i can see cat, that uh, cat drug in cc and we, we <laughs> heard about fucking that that tour when i was a wee jode and and it was cool you know it was just just one of those neat things so that, that was kind of like one of those like you know cool like full circle you know moments if you will you know and it's you know my you know we're all just all just music fans you know it's just, right it's fun, cool <laughs> I, i'm gonna throw out a i'm gonna throw out a quick story to you guys uh the time i got to meet blitz from overkill uh we we saw him in concert at a, a small venue and their show got over fairly early so we walked a couple blocks to a different venue and went and watched some more bands play their drummer came in and he ended up joining one of the bands on stage and taking over the drum duties, basically. Like he came in and I was like, hey, I just got done watching you. I bought him a drink and we sat there and chatted for a bit. And then me and my buddy were like, hey, let's head back out. And we walked back past the venue we were at. So I was like, hey, those guys are just chilling in the bus. Like maybe Blitz will come out and say, hey. And like the tour manager was standing like right by the bus door. And I asked him, I was like, hey, you think you'll come out and say, hey, he's like, oh, we, we're about to roll out. We got to go. And I was like, that's hilarious because your drummer's in the bar. I just like, <laughs> playing drums. 
So good luck. <laughs> yeah. And he looks at me like, oh, damn, why well, didn't work? He walks <laughs> up on the bus, blitz comes back out. And I was like, nice. I didn't think, I didn't think that would actually work. He came out, he's like, hey, what's up, guys? How are you? And we're like, oh, you know, just, just fans were at the show earlier. Just good to say hey. So it was a, it was a great time when I got to call out the tour manager, think he could lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tour managers, they run the gamut from being like the most awesome people in the world to like the crabbiest hall monitors in the world. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of in between. It's like, right. it's really like one or the other. And they put up with a lot. You know, you're basically babysitting children, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so I can appreciate I wouldn't want that job, you know, but 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 yeah, you know, we we come across them because you know, like we open for somebody, uh you know, a lot of times you may or may not see the artist depending on how big they are, and mm -hmm. you, you have con contacts with like their tour manager will tell you the rules for being on stage and stuff and one of my favorite rules that i ever got from a tour manager was we're we're at sturgis and we we're up for kid rock and there's tour managers like okay i want to sit down who's the head of your operation i'm like that, that's me we don't have a tour manager you know <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. all right well let me go over the rules with you he's like all right first you can't spill beer on kid rock's carpet <laughs> all right <laughs> all right I'm like, all right got it what's next and he just like looked at me, he goes, no, you can't spill beer on his carpet. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got it. What, what, what's the other ones? He's like, no, nah, that's it, man. <laughs> it's like, so, you know, I, I go, I go sit down with the other guys and like, they're waiting for me to come back with like this long list of rules which you can't do on stage. I'm like, all right, guys, you're going to bring it in. You know, I'd, of course I'd have played up to him. Like, don't spill beer on Kid Rock's carpet. And they're like, yeah, and what else? I'm like, no, that's it, man. <laughs> you know, just don't spill beer in this carpet, and we're good. You know, so I, I, which I think is a fair rule. You know, I, you know, we shouldn't. You don't want to spill. He had awesome carpets on stage, and you know, you don't spill beer. On <laughs> it's good <Wow>. stuff. <laughs> that one was my favorite. You know, and then but you, then you might have the other one where you have to pull out a fucking scroll and like, mm -hmm. like okay, I lost track of it. after. I was like, my brain can only handle three things at a time, man. You know. <laughs> Only three give rules allowed. That's it. Give me Anything the top the three. three. In the top three, you know, yeah. not, not that we're not that we're pretty stripped down. You know, it's like, uh, you know, they're like, all right, so this, you know, what do you need to plug in? I'm like, um, the rock comes out of the marshals and the drums. And the, well, do you have backing tracks? Like, no. <laughs> like, you mm -hmm. know, like, it just we just you, the rock <laughs> comes out of the guitar through the marshal, and you just mic that. <laughs> <laughs> simple <laughs> hell yeah so how you guys? i'm glad to see you guys back man you know doing your thing and stuff life's been good it's just great to be back yeah it is it, it is. really is it's it's that one day a week I, I take that back because tuesday nights i seriously spend like two hours preparing for wednesday <laughs> making my notes making I sure love it. it i love it write down things like joe will tell me about fish i'm going to ask him like those are the things I write down. No, but are... but we I appreciate it, man. You you don't believe how many of like these that I'll do, like, you know, and the person will come on and be like, and you are? <laughs> and I'm like, really, bro? <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, man. You know, it's like you you could have you could have like looked at your sheet like five minutes ahead of time. They're like, and your yeah. new album is the the stereo overthrow, huh? Like, yeah, glad, glad he had time to listen to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite track? <laughs> yeah, oh no, I know. Yeah, it's like that's the, yeah. Sometimes I'm just uh, you know it's so uh, yeah you know we've been but other than that you know I'm watching a lot of pro wrestling. I learn a lot of like uh, Mike skills from watching heels and pro wrestling. That's that's where it's all at. You know, that's what's up, yeah. <laughs> Something so something new that I was unaware of. Uh, oh, no shit. <laughs> oh shit. I yeah, oh, Chris, I could even get into that with uh yeah, we watch uh we, it's funny because we've since made Jake was a giant pro wrestling fan and and uh and and we ended up meeting folks in the WWE that were big music fans. And so like now now our web of pro wrestlers that we know has like expanded and I and I'm pissed because I still haven't got to interfere in a match. Like every time we go see one of their matches, I'm like my next test match, my next text will be, okay, at what point can I interfere in the match? And like, <laughs> <laughs> usually, they're like, at no point. <laughs> like, 
I'll be like, yeah, but, you know, if I interfere, I was like, I've been watching, you know, like the Ultimate Warrior. And they're like, you know, the Ultimate Warrior really can't wrestle. I was like, yeah, but he has tassels on his arm. And he <laughs> <laughs> we come, actually, we come out to that now. If uh, if you guys come out to an SH song this year, our, our intro theme is the Ultimate Warrior's final speech he gave before he died. And then it cuts to, I am a real American, you know, the Hulk Hogan theme. And then we come out on stage because that's... Why, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Seems like <laughs> now I have to come to a show. Yeah, yeah. You, you've yeah. got to see that because let me rephrase. Now you have to be close enough for me to come to a show. Yeah, there we, you go. <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah, and we can, but yeah, it's the, but it's like the, because at first, like we, you know, that's one of the biggest arguments we have. Not songwriting. What our intro song is going to be? So, like for the <laughs> longest time, it was like the Fall Guy, and you know, try to convince somebody born in 1994 that it's a good idea to come out to the Fall Guy. Dude, thing. I would fucking shit dude, if I saw oh, that. This, it's like, shut up, millennial. This is important. <laughs> like, this is the Fall Guy. I was like, he was a stunt man and a bounty hunter, and he had the greatest theme song, period. And you know, so we came out to the Fall Guy for a long time, and uh, you know, we we come out to Hank you know, Waylon Jennings. You know, we we've done a lot of different ones. You know, and we tried to come out to a hip hop song. That was that was the worst idea ever. Like, if you want to see our fan base not respond at all to something, come out to Dr. Dre and Tupac. <laughs> no, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. I'm sorry, it was Ice Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. We came out to Natural Born Killers. We're very excited about it because, and, and we're like, this is gonna be the greatest intro music of all time. It was like crickets for like the six minutes that that song was. Like, look, Charlie, he's out. He's like, no, nah, I'm not into this, man. I'm just fucking, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I think he went to turn a light on. I did. <laughs> yeah. The screen was getting very, very dark. Yeah, I, I, I could just kind of slowly see me fading into the dark. I was like, I was over here reaching for the blinds that I was trying to close before we started because it was too fucking bright. And then I'm like trying to open it up and I was like, yeah, that's not working, man. Yeah, that's all right. The only, <laughs> it's like Dio, the rainbow in the dark. That was, I saw, I saw Dio one time, Dio, Iron Maiden and Motorhead. What a great concert. No shit. It's like something. And that was a really cool tour. It was a, many moons ago, but it, it was really cool. And I always say that there was a, and I, this isn't funny, but if you understand my sense of humor, you're not going to, if, Listen, anybody that's listening, if you get offended by anything I say, please consider the source of information. A full grown man that stands on a beer cake and with a chew in. All right. So that's my <laughs> preface to this conversation. But uh, there, there was, you know, they have the, they have the handicap section. There was a fellow in a wheelchair and, and I shit you not, this guy was in his wheelchair the entire show. And when Dio got the breakdown for Rainbow in the Dark, you know, when everybody started pounding, Mm -hmm. this dude stood up and started fist pounding. I was just like, holy shit, Dio made a man that couldn't walk, walk as he rocked. I was like, and that's the power of Dio right there. I was just like, I was like hitting my cousin. I'm like, look, this guy stood up. Like, I was like, fucking Dio made, he's Rainbow in the Dark. He'd make men that were in wheelchairs formerly stand up and rock. So that's that's what Dio can do. (laughs) He probably could. Yeah, here comes my hate. And in, in my inbox now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're canceled. <laughs> you offended me. This isn't a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I tapped on some shit. That was my. That was. This is my own political statement. I'll ever make. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> well, Joe, I don't. I don't even know how to thank you enough for coming hey, and chatting man. with us again. Uh, hey, I know man. it's been way too long. We will definitely be out to see you if you're close. I, yeah, I know that. We'd love to. Uh, man. It's, it's been too long, you know, and, you know, we're glad to see you guys up and running again. You know, like we're all in this kind of thing together, you know, like we're all, you know, doing different sides of, of you know, uh, you know, putting, putting, pushing, you know, talking about music. That's mm-hmm. cool. I love it, man. I, I like to talk to people all around the fucking world, you know, about, you know, we, yeah, maybe maybe our numbers are smaller than they once were, but we're still there, you know, and it's it's cool to see. You know, it's it's always fun to talk to people with passion, you know. We absolutely want to keep pushing for you guys and yeah, we're yeah. always here for you for sure. You know that. Oh yeah. Like even when we didn't have a show, we were still here for you. <laughs> I know that man. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we're about to uh wrap up. Killer. We've uh definitely exceeded our normal time frame that we rolled through right. but, uh, that's talking that's with why you, you came so second easy. you can go longer yeah, yeah. You, dude you give me the lane man I'll, I can <laughs> talk about my 
it, it's so easy when you you're so easy because you just keep rolling and we're like yes this is what we need every week <laughs> like, we don't even have to prompt you we're like just give him the microphone and say talk <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah they have to cut me off on stage all the time because like i'll get a bug up my ass or something you know like in between songs they're like okay this could be as long as the whole fucking set you know <laughs> it's, it's bug up his ass and i say it's like jesse james dupree yeah. turn his shit off yo <laughs> for sure <laughs> Oh, fuck. Yeah. All right, now, we'll say that for next time. I got, I got a Jesse James Dupree story too. We'll say that. <laughs> hey, Absolutely. Look, you're, you're already going into that lane, man. I'll be like, you know, it's, <laughs> he's Absolutely. Good, I think good, Ashton good. is going to take us out with a little music. All right, man. We'll hang here and, and listen to our exit song with us. We'll be right here. friends too <laughs> we always we always wait for that all right clear <laughs> it's like nobody fucking breathe don't breathe <laughs> yeah, it's the wayne's world three two <laughs> but it's also one of those things like we could talk to you forever but also like people's attention spans are gonna be like i'm done with oh this, yeah yeah right. we're oh. Battling, man you know like with the uh you know like even taking time to like release albums and stuff like that these days you know or like you know trying to do concept things like you know we're in like fucking twitter world and tiktok you know where people want like you know their information shit Mm -hmm. really short so I, I i understand that i'm all, always having to edited stuff down like a lot shorter you know for the for the fucking goldfish attention span yep. <laughs> yeah. is what it is you know we just got to fucking go with it you know <laughs> i absolutely time. love having you to chat with tonight yeah like, man we appreciate seeing you guys it was uh like yeah. it's super great and i i know that you saw with what happened to charlie today so yeah man